Teotihuacan is without doubt one of the most mysterious places within the Americas, or possibly on Earth. While the incredible complexity and architectural precision has baffled archaeologists for decades, there is a far more perplexing mystery specifically surrounding the pyramids within this ancient place. The presence of mica, a powerful radioactive insulator, is perhaps one of the biggest enigmas of these great ancient structures. Established or quite possibly re-inhabited around 100 BC until its fall between the 7th and 8th centuries, Teotihuacan was one of the largest cities in the ancient world, with over 150,000 inhabitants at its peak. According to archaeologists, the advanced design of Teotihuacan suggests that ancient builders had advanced knowledge not only of architecture but of complex mathematical and astronomical sciences. Additionally, one of the more intriguing characteristics differentiating it from many other ancient sites is the fact that from the air, Teotihuacan strangely resembles that of a modern computer circuit board. Curiously, when Hernán Cortés and his men conquered the Aztec Empire in the 16th century, they asked the natives who had built such a colossal city. The Aztec replied, We were not the builders of Teotihuacan. This city was built by the Kina Natsin, a race of giants who came here from the heavens in the times of the second sun. The Aztecs were in fact the ancient civilization that named the place Teotihuacan, yet they did not know the original name for the city. The pyramids had remained buried, hidden under several meters of vegetation for unknown millennia, only rediscovered within the last century. Then in 1906, on the fifth deck of the Pyramid of the Sun, a thick layer of laminated mica covering an enormous area was unearthed. At that time in 1906, mica was an invaluable resource, highly priced on the world market. It is used for the construction of capacitors and is considered an incredibly efficient electrical and thermal insulator, which has a melting point of over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Most of the mica found in 1906 at Teotihuacan was unfortunately robbed out, subsequently sold at a great price to resource tycoons. Fortunately, however, not all the mica has disappeared from Teotihuacan. Today, there are still a few places where you can find the original mica, carefully laid within the pyramid's body. It seems for some mysterious reason, the unknown builders of this great ancient city managed to extract and transport this mica from far away. According to tests carried out by the Viking Foundation, discoverer of one of the rooms coated with mica, this valuable material has an unmistakable signature allowing us to tell exactly where in the world it had originally been extracted. It was discovered that it had come from a region located more than 3,200 kilometers away within Brazil. This in of itself is an enigma. The only real purpose it would seem for the use of such an exotic material is for the management of electrical currents, a theory, thankfully, more and more talented minds are beginning to look at seriously. As a result, we may finally unravel one of the greatest mysteries still plaguing the modern man. What were the pyramids built for? The Pyramid of Menkura may be the smallest of the three main pyramids of Giza, but some find this site to be one of the most intriguing to be found upon the Giza Plateau. Not only does the pyramid still possess casing stones of a polygonal style, nearly identical to that found throughout ancient Peru, and indeed now discovered globally. But it also possesses gigantic ancient megalithic blocks, exposed for all to see. These impossibly huge blocks of stone are clearly of a tremendous age, leading up to a once immaculately carved inner chamber. On the 28th of July, 1837, Howard Weiss rediscovered the upper antechamber of the pyramid. Within, the remains of a wooden anthropoid coffin inscribed with Menkura's name was found. This tomb did indeed contain human bones. However, this is now considered to be a substitute coffin. Radiocarbon dating on the bones also claim to have determined them to be less than 2,000 years old, which, according to certain researchers, suggests an all-too-common bungled handling of remains from another site. 
Furthermore, along with polygonal masonry, an inner chamber and three tiny accompanying pyramids, known as G3A, G3B, G3C, the age of this pyramid has also not been hypothesized or narrowed down to any specific era within the ancient Egyptian empire, making it an obscurity, and also, predictably, a lesser-known site within academic study and mainstream reporting. Who built the pyramid? Are the megaliths within the outer temple walls the same as those of the exoskeletons of the larger ancient Great Pyramids? An ancient anomaly which has been exposed mostly upon the east wing of Cheops by the removal of outer casing stones which we have in the past reported on, along with their clearly much younger age. In AD 1196, Al-Aziz Uthman, Saladin's son and the Sultan of Egypt, attempted to demolish the pyramids, starting with Menkura. However, and rather predictably, eight months in, they found that it was nearly impossible to destroy. Not only could they only remove one or two stones each day, when a stone fell, it would bury itself in the sand, requiring extraordinary efforts to free it. Wedges were used to split the stones into several pieces. Despite their efforts, workmen were only able to damage the pyramid to the extent of leaving a large vertical gash at its northern face. It is undoubtedly a highly intriguing pyramid. Ancient building techniques are an excellent subject to explore if one wishes to understand just how advanced our hidden ancestors were. Additionally, it allows one to get a true insight into the contradictions currently upheld by academic institutes the world over. There still exists an extraordinarily diverse array of building techniques. Some, interestingly, appear to overlap even older advanced methods. For example, a stone boring technology, seemingly used upon many ancient monuments, in many cases, it appears to have been deliberately used to slightly damage these ancient stones, leaving them etched with uncanny marks, possibly in an attempt to also leave their mark to prove their past existence, later to be realized by us, now laying within their very distant future. We feel that these marks, along with many other aspects of these ancient sites, indicates that many ancient civilizations have been and gone here upon our Earth. Ancient metal clamps used to seat enormous stones, precision machine-cut blocks, some left within quarries, clearly indicating machine manipulation, impossible block building, effortlessly fitting random-sized blocks perfectly together. Yet the most enigmatic of these ancient building features, which many suspect was indeed somehow connected to the construction of said sites, has to be the protuberances. Rarely mentioned within history books, yet these protuberances are present on many of the most ancient of block structures, which can be found all over the world. No one seems to know what these protuberances were placed upon these structures for. The biggest of these, undoubtedly carved into the still in situ megaliths at Yangshan Quarry, a feature we have previously noted and pondered over. Not only do these enigmatic notches suggest a past, world-going, highly advanced civilization having once prospered here upon our planet, but a feature known as the Boss Mark, found deep within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, may link, for the first time, the builders of the Great Pyramids ancient structures found elsewhere on Earth. Furthermore, the methods used by the pyramid builders are, interestingly, the same methods used by builders of the other sites containing protuberances. This strategic building method, meaning that their ruins have outlived, we feel, many other ancient civilizations now lost to history. Their capability to move such mind-bogglingly huge stone blocks and their ability to create such erosion-resistant structures, indicate to us that the builders of these sites may have lived an unimaginably long time ago, and probably chose to create such earth-shifting structures in a bid to indeed survive the eons. Were they doing so in an attempt to leave their legacy on our planet? Or maybe they were, and are, 
still trying to tell us something. Only time will tell. The Queen's Chamber, which lays within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, more commonly known as Cheops, has astonished, shocked, and mystified Egyptologists since its mysterious existence was discovered. The intrigue into this elusive chamber, along with its mysterious adjacent shafts, comes as no surprise once one understands the anomalous characteristics of their construction. As we have already covered before, massive cover-ups have been suspected as taking place surrounding this mysterious chamber since its discovery. Strange shaft tunnels, set at a 45-degree incline, no larger than 20 centimeters in diameter, run away from this room, and no one seems to know why. Not only would these ancient shafts require being hermetically sealed during the pyramid's construction to stop them from becoming blocked, but the excruciating effort that would have gone into making them becomes all the more of a confusing undertaking once you realize they were not even connected to the chamber, but hidden 40 centimeters away from entering the tomb within the walls, completely invisible from the inside of the burial room located deep within the structure. Cheops, noticeably being the only pyramid to have ever been constructed with such shafts, making their addition a popular mystery within Egyptian history. One leads out from the subterranean chamber, two lead out from a termination point some 40 centimeters from the wall of the so-called Queen's Chamber, or now popularly suspected to be that of an alien tomb among ancient alien specialists, and two from the King's Chamber above. Here is where our story becomes interesting. Rudolf Gantenbrick, famous for actually discovering the blocking door within one of the queen's chamber shafts, which could lead to an as yet undisclosed tomb, has also made other curious discoveries within the Great Pyramid. Discoveries which could only be explained by modern covert explorations of tunnels that were supposedly to that point unexplored. Gantenbrick's cache being but one example of these mysterious finds, deep within the tunnel systems in the royal chamber, at a 90-degree turn going vertically upwards, a pile of papers, possibly wrapped artifacts, weighed down with a small piece of timber or stone, possibly another artifact, was discovered by Gantenbrick's robot. Also, during initial location attempts to find access tunnels leading to the Queen's chamber, Several blocking stones required removal. After the removal of the seventh block, a modern-era hexagonal steel rods were discovered discarded upon the tunnel's floor. Each section of the hexagonal steel rods measures 2.7 meters in length and was fitted with a round socket which allowed them to be joined to the next section. In one of the lower shafts in 1872, Wayneman Dixon found three more objects which could be considered proof of prior covert exploration of the mysterious northern shafts. A copper grappling hook, about 5 centimeters in length, accompanied by a small, gray-green stone ball and a broken-off piece of a square wooden slat or rod, about 13 centimeters long, the wood would today be the most intriguing of his finds. These artifacts suspected to be remnants of the grave robber's tools, could have been carbon dated. Yet this fragment is the only one of the three to now be missing out of the London Museum's collection. Unfortunately, in his writings, Dixon doesn't say in which of the two lower shafts he actually found the objects, but he mentions them in connection with a northern one. Not only did these obviously highly intelligent people leave evidence of how they must have gotten in, but also traces upon the previous untouched ancient walls of the shafts within Cheops clearly left by their previous robotic technologies. Other square metal rods have been recovered, along with other artifacts discarded within some tunnel systems deep within the ancient structures. Meaning these guys got to the treasures way before we did. Interestingly, reported evidence of covert excavations continues to this day, heavy-duty electrical supplies discreetly running into and trailing deep into the pyramids have been noticed and photographed by some of the more astute tourists. Witnesses to the sounds of heavy machinery being used beneath the site is also frequently reported, yet rarely followed up. It seems it's not a question of whether brilliant minds have achieved the seemingly impossible, 
in penetrating these secret layers, but more a question of how and what astonishing finds have possibly been kept concealed. There are many mysteries to be found within ancient Egypt. Unexplained, seemingly impossible mysteries, which litter the caverns, tunnels, flooded underground layers, and indeed, the once inaccessible passageways, only recently explored using advanced modern technology. However, some of the most perplexing mysteries lay in plain sight. Not only the Great Pyramids themselves, an obvious enigma for academia to explain the construction of, but many anomalous features which can be found within objects often leaving academics baffled as to an explanation. The Cheops sarcophagus being one such anomaly. Although these pyramids are entered and explored by millions of people every year, and indeed, this mysterious sarcophagus shown to many of these inquisitive explorers, what many the funded academic tour guide often leaves absent from their explanation of this supposed tomb is how exactly it arrived at its current location. As we have explored and exposed previously, the casing stones that can be found on many of the pyramids are to us not only indicative of another phase of construction work, once having been undertaken upon these structures, but due to the erosion present and the different styles featured, are in fact indicative of more than one attempt to conserve these marvelous structures for future generations. Thus, one must conclude by more than one now extinct advanced civilization. As such, the age of the sarcophagus of Cheops could be immense. So it is not surprising that it has encountered not only grave robbers, but has been vandalized also at points within the distant past. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing and frustrating, is that the sarcophagus lid is missing, a lid that could have explained the past contents of this mysterious box. Or like the tomb of Pakal, exposed extremely controversial illustrations of possible past technologies. Unfortunately, however, or rather most conveniently for academics, this lid has never been discovered. Yet what is most perplexing regarding this diorite box, notably one of the hardest workable stones on Earth, is that no one seems to know how the original builders managed to transport the box to its current location deep within the bowels of Cheops. The diameter of this supposed tomb, being too large to have traveled down any of the known tunnels, which have so far been discovered within the ancient pyramid. This leaves us with two likely possibilities. One, that the diorite box was placed there and the pyramid built around it, which is a mysterious and confusing hypothesis mostly due to the lack of markings of significance found upon the sarcophagus, or indeed the lack of any dedicative markings found anywhere else surrounding it. It is as though the box was placed there without much effort to indicate any importance to its existence. Yet, to cut such a box, which has since been discovered to have been cast from one single block of diorite, would have taken tremendous effort a feat that modern man would only accomplish with the use of diamond-edged power tools. Not to mention the effort that would have been involved in moving this multi-ton stone into its found location. The second hypothesis regarding how this sarcophagus found its way into its current location is that the box itself was transported to its found location through tunnels and passageways we are yet to discover possibly hinting at the fact that within this Great Pyramid, there are indeed many more hidden layers and cavities we are yet to explore or discover. Maybe the placement of this seemingly inanimate box was placed there to suggest exactly this. Furthermore, what was on the lid of this supposed sarcophagus? Why is it known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, when Khufu was not discovered within it? In fact, nothing was discovered within it. And why is the lid mysteriously absent? Where did the lid to the sarcophagus go? Why, if destroyed by grave robbers, was it not left where it lay? Did this lid contain controversial information, 
possibly pertaining to the original contents or indeed purpose of the Great Pyramids? We find the diorite sarcophagus of Khufu, and indeed its unexplainable journey into the center of the pyramid, highly compelling. Countless talented, valiant souls spanning all throughout modern history have been publicly lambasted for their troubles. Not only are such readings and results regularly scoffed at, and any subsequent finding, all stemming from their honest admittance that their data showed evidence of inhabitation with quote, underestimated prehistoric dates. Many of these artifacts and ruins, claimed as being a mere few centuries old, we have, due to extensive research into similarities and differentiations at many of these sites, managed to locate signature stonework within the structure's outer walls, clearly submerged and perfectly preserved for untold millennia. Indicative of many inexplicable sites around the world, which some even claim are upwards of 300 million years old. The Great Pyramids, along with their Great Sphinx, we feel, with the substantial evidence we have previously put forward, is a treasure trove of examples, for when one becomes aware of Giza's anomalies at least, can expose those fed a lie, the impossibilities within said conspiracy theory, and begin to realize more and more unexplainable anomalies, helping others to realize just how impossibly difficult these structures would have been to create. A feat when considered by many especially those with a good idea for the sheer size of this place, find the reality that the plateau was possibly man-made very hard to conceive. Subsequently, still concealing many secrets, which we feel, is the purpose of the plateau being created in the first place. And although it seemingly spans far from the feet of the gigantic pyramidic trio and their accompanying sphinx, we feel this was deliberate and not naturally formed. According to computer engines, the stresses within the Great Pyramid itself were perfectly calculated. However, the main strut or lintel in the Grand Gallery is cracked, indicating pulley systems or other heavy technology was still atop the structure once built. This extra weight has been hypothesized was an oversight. Furthermore, any attempts to reconstruct these incredible buildings by using computer systems to simulate supposed slave attempts we still, to this day, cannot find a valid working technique. However, if one ups the size of the being, their strength, and indeed their intellect, not only were the pyramids within reach, but also many other baffling megalithic areas, such as polygonal masonry, all could be explained. Additionally, along with this hypothesis, many giant-sized sarcophagi have been found throughout Giza, yet we feel covered up dismissed as clearly what they are tombs, in favor of explaining them away as storage cases. Who built ancient Egypt? When did they build it? How did they build it? Questions which need to be answered. Questions which we find highly compelling. The ancient mega-metropolis of Guatemala, undoubtedly one of the most incredible and indeed one of the largest ancient ruins ever found on our planet. With a past population now believed to have been as many as 10 million people, many of the ancient ruins within the Guatemalan rainforest, long thought and academically argued to have been separate settlements, have now been discovered to have once been all part of the same super-settlement. However, Although incredible discoveries have been made at the sites, in particular the incredible site of Tikal, including the ancient plaque depicting a seeming cataclysm, have all been found at the site. Yet what was discovered most recently is no less incredible and may also depict a war between these differing concentrations of people within its many ancient settlements. A giant frieze, or frise if you will, 8 meters wide and 2 meters tall, has been found within an ancient pyramid long hidden, buried within the rainforest, found along the exterior of a multi-roomed rectangular building within a 20-meter high pyramid. It was created in a style now long attributed to the Maya. The carving depicts human figures in a seemingly mythological setting, suggesting it may depict deified rulers. 
It displays three human figures wearing elaborate bird headdresses and jade jewels sitting cross-legged and appearing above the head of a mountain spirit known as a wits. A cartouche on the headdress contains glyphs which were used to identify individuals depicted by name. Yet, alas, only the central figure's name is still legible, with an inscription saying Och Chan Yopat, meaning the storm god enters the sky. Two feathered serpents are also shown emerging from a mountain, with a spirit below the main character forming an arch with their bodies. Much of the building in which the frieze was found still remains encased under ancient rubble, yet this has seemingly aided in the preservation of the incredible artwork with the carving still possessing its paint, reds, blues, greens, and yellows, all still existing. Francisco Estrada Belli, director of the Holmu Archaeological Project, made the initial discovery. Quote, this is a unique find. It is a beautiful work of art, and it tells us so much about the function and meaning of the building, which is what we were looking for. End quote. Thanks to the artwork and the message it conveys, Archaeologists now believe it is evidence suggesting that the rulers of the region were once embroiled in a political clash of the Titans between the kings of Kanul, the Snake Kingdom, and the kings of Takal. And although we now know that these settlements, and indeed the depictions of these different apparent clans, were all connected, it could be indicative of the ultimate reason for the demise of this once great civilization. Are we looking at the only artwork ever discovered throughout Guatemala which sheds light on the demise of the mega-metropolis? We find the evidence to suggest so highly compelling. In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michel spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling, and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material, said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia and whatever landed there over a century ago is still there, and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be?